I'm Steve Taylor. Welcome to another installment of MSP webinars. Uh, today we've got a fun one. We've got Frank from Audit, and then we also have Scott. Uh, and I'm sorry, Scott, I don't remember what company you're from, but Scott is another MSP just like us. Uh, and between the two of them, we're going to learn about the audit sales presentation system. And uh, I, I don't know about you, but I just absolutely love that logo. I mean, it. it I, can you zoom back into that, Frank? Because I just, I just want to point something out. So you guys will understand the colors here soon, but just the fact that the logo itself even portrays the the red, yellow, green, and then it just keeps getting better and better after it's green. That right there should tell you enough about audit. Um, so I, I'm just going to toss it right over to Frank. If, if you could kind of uh, give some background about yourself, what made you decide to you know, start audit as a company? And um, yeah, just take it away. Cool. <clears throat> well, thanks so much for having me here. And uh, <laughs> I've never had anybody uh, like the logo so much, but uh, now I like it even more. So I <laughs> appreciate the kind words. Um, so like you and Scott, I am also an MSP. I'm actually uh, the founder and uh, chief executive officer of Audit, but I'm also the founder and CEO, CTO of Two River Technology Group in New Jersey. Um, our business has been around for 13 years, and I've been in the IT world for over 20. Started out in the, on the financial services side and kind of migrated my way over towards technology. Uh, we're a, a proud member uh, about eight years now with Robin Robbins uh, Producers Club, part of the Technology Marketing Toolkit in Nashville. And we're also a, a top OS33 cloud provider. So it just provides a little bit of background about me as an MSP. Um, because we're all here for the audit side of things. Let me just jump right into this and, and, and tell you a little bit about why I created this and how we use it. So um, I always like to start with what is our why? And for me, my why was to really, um, I wanted to elevate the quality of IT that was available to the SMB marketplace. And I'll explain a little bit more about that. So every time I go out to a prospect's office, I look around and Nine times out of 10, it, it's a mess, right? The wires, the cables are all hanging, the firewalls, you know, if, if there is even one is hanging off the shelf. And I'd always scratch my head and say, wow, I can't believe that this company has an IT person or an IT company handling their things. And it's always been disappointing to me to see that because that's my IT brethren, right? And I, and I, and it's a, to me, I, it's like a, it's a, it's a stain on our industry, right? And I wonder like, why can't, they do a better job for this business because many times the small business doesn't know what they don't know, right? We do because we look at this with a particular, you know, shade of glasses that we understand IT, but the business owner has no idea what, what state that they're in. So I look at it and many times I'm disappointed. And I started to think about, you know, it's not for a lack of knowledge and or products that are available because we know there's a ton of great stuff out there targeted specifically for small businesses. And so what I really sort of boiled it down to is it's that a lot of the MSPs have a tough time selling the right solutions to the SMBs, right? And myself included, you know, I'm, I have a technical background. I didn't go to college for sales. I have a mechanical engineering degree. And if you give me enough time, if you ask me what time it is, I'll tell you how the watch was made. It's just how I'm wired. And I started to think about that in my own business and how we were selling, how it was somewhat difficult for us to sell. And then I realized, well, that's probably why every time I go into a prospect's office, it's sort of an IT disarray because my other MSP brethren have a tough time selling the right things. So my, 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 my feeling was if we can come up with a better way to sell and make it easier and take some of the, uh, the art out of it, well, then the, then the true beneficiaries would be these, M, uh, these SMBs and they'd end up with better technology and we'd have a whole lot less problems and security breaches and things on our hands. So <clears throat> with that said, the origin of this, uh, this whole audit product really dates back to <clears throat> when I first started with Robin Robbins in, uh, in Technology Marketing Toolkit. And from an early, uh, early time, we, I was introduced to these free reports. This is a form of marketing that Robin is, uh, is very popular uh, for. It's a uh, direct marketing and a lot of the offers that appear whether on websites or emails 
usually is for some sort of report that you might download that's educational in nature. And then there's an offer in the free report. And I was introduced to this thing called a 27 point audit. And Scott knows what I'm talking about because he saw this 27 point audit offer and probably uses some of these same reports branded for his company. And the one challenge that I had was that I didn't know what the 27 point audit was supposed to contain. And so I remember uh, elbowing the person sitting next to me at a table one time during you know, one of the sessions. And I said, hey, uh, can you send me the 27 point audit? You know, I, I, so I have the report so you know, that I know what to do. And the person kind of looked at me with a blank stare. And then it's when I realized this really wasn't a thing. This was sort of like, you have to figure this out. And so for a couple of years, every time that I would use this marketing, and I would promise this audit, and then this one happens to be for a cloud readiness assessment, but you know, we have variations where it might be a security assessment or a network assessment or audit. Whatever it was, I can tell you that I, I reinvented it every single time. So I would go in and one time I'd use like a Word document that I stitched together. Another time I used some rapid fire tools reports. Another time I, I would mash up both of those and maybe throw an Excel spreadsheet. So it became frustrating to me that there was no actual 27 point audit or a standard for this. And because of it, I think my sales suffered. <clears throat> a couple of years uh, later, I joined Service Leadership and they have a particular program called Sleek, Service Leadership IQ. Really great product. Uh, it interviews you across a variety of areas of your business, uh, sales, marketing, operations, et cetera. And based on your answers, it gives you a score. And that score is called an operational maturity level or OML. And the idea is you're gonna get a score between one to five, five being the highest. And they give you your score and then they tell you what you should do based on your answers. And in the order you should do it, that will have the greatest impact at moving your OML score up towards a five. And you'll see, um, this is an actual screen grab from my report. <clears throat> it said that my number one thing that I should do, it says rank in action plan one. It says, it's highlighted here, top performing solution providers recognize that requiring a fee-based assessment more frequently positions them for a win-win with the customer. So I remember staring at this and thinking, wow, they want me to charge for this 27 point audit. Um, I didn't even have the confidence to give it away for free because I didn't really know exactly what I should be doing. And every time I did one, I did something different. So I could never truly measure what did or didn't work. So I remember staring at this and this posed, this posed a problem. And because I'm kind of stubborn, I didn't even get to rank in action plan number two because I couldn't get past number one. It tells you here, hey, develop a basic framework and tools for doing the assessment. The initial form is simply a checklist, which will evolve. So at this stage, this is when I decided, you know what, I'm going to take the bull by the horns and I'm going to, to crack the code on this 27 point audit and figure out an easier way to present the results of the assessment and also have the confidence to be able to sell it and hopefully increase the sales in my business. <clears throat> so that's sort of how this whole thing got started. As an aside, one thing that I continue to also find was that I was always drawing pictures. And as they say, the picture is worth a thousand words. Anytime I did any kind of presentation to a prospect, I'd find myself flipping over sheets of paper and drawing pictures, you know, cloud, arrows, whatever, to try to convey a concept. And I often thought, you know, at some point I'm going to get motivated and I'm going to pro professionally produce like a one pager on certain things that I'm trying to sell, maybe a firewall or maybe antivirus or something, because I got tired of drawing the picture. So this kind of stuck in the back of my mind that, you know, at some point I'm going to want to, you know, uh, get that professionally produced. I took a look at what I was leaving behind um, after my presentations, right? So I would go through this network assessment or a security assessment in whatever incarnation that I had. But really, all that was was a conduit to get to my proposal, right, which is where I was actually doing the selling. So we had a pretty nice looking proposal. We spent some consulting dollars with Quozel to, you know, to make it look professional and nice. But what I found was that that's what I was leaving behind. And the prospects, you know, didn't necessarily understand everything that I was saying. 
But the one thing that everybody understands, the one common language that seemed all the prospects spoke was bottom line dollars and cents. And what I started to find was as I was selling more and more cloud solutions, those solutions were more expensive than my managed services solutions. And the problem was that I was being compared now to somebody else who came in who the prospect probably didn't understand what they were saying, but what they did understand was that the prospect was less than what Two River was offering. So the prospect got the business. And I started to get really frustrated because for the first time now in my, my career, I started to lose more sales than I care to admit because we were too expensive. So I knew, you know, as they say, price is only ever an issue in the absence of value. I knew I had to come up with a different presentation that would express value, but still keep it simple for the prospect. Now, before I got started on trying to figure out what kind of system would do this, I, I had to take a look at like, what, what, what was I doing today? Like, what do we do in our industry today? And what I found after speaking with a bunch of MSPs and also looking at what I was encouraged to do was that the focus is on gathering the data rather than presenting the results, right? The, uh, there's a lot of tools and a lot of energy that's thrown into gathering and collecting the data in some sort of automated way, right? Run this scan, uh, load these tools, and it's going to gather all this techie information. And what I found was that it's just that, it's techie information. So this was an example of, of something that somebody passed along to me one day and said, oh, well, here's what I use to, you know, to show the prospect. And I remember reading this and thinking like, well, does your prospect understand what an operational mirror is on a RAID system? Like, that's pretty techie. Yeah. Like, who? Can I be honest? This makes my brain hurt. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> it's just I so mean, boring. You, man, Exactly. And who and, and which prospect's gonna say, you know, I didn't realize that my fragmentation level was so high. So yeah, let's let's buy from you. So so this kind of stuff is is really is what's been out is out there and this is the kind of technical data that we're encouraged to gather. So somewhere during this uh, this little fact finding mission that I went on to try to understand uh, what I was doing better, um, I went to the doctor for just a regular checkup. And he said, you know, we're going to send you just for some routine blood work and uh, come back next week and we'll review the results. So I said, oh, OK. And it dawned on me. I'm like, well, that's like a 27 point audit, except maybe this is just one of those points. So I went, had some blood drawn and I came back. And you know how they sit you in the doctor's office and make you wait a little while, like makes you nervous as though like maybe something's wrong. There was a folder sitting there and I could see there's papers in the folder. And it's, you know, it's kind of like a quarter inch thick. And I'm thinking like, wow, that must, that's all the results of the blood work. There's a lot in there. I wonder what's going on. And the doctor came in and he opened the folder and said, I reviewed all the, the uh, lab work and your cholesterol is slightly high. Um, here's what I want you to do. Uh, lay off the cheese and we'll come back in six months and we'll test it again. And I remember thinking like, wow, like that's it? Like we're not going to like, you're not going to teach me about hemoglobin and what the carbon dioxide levels mean. Like, like that's it. You just, you just said you have high cholesterol and you know, come back in six months. Like you gave me a bottom line to that. I remember thinking if I was the doctor, you know, the poor patient would have been there for like three hours. So I started to think, why don't we think more like the doctor and not a technician when selling, right? Maybe just give them a bottom line, you know, instead of, trying to explain how the MRI works and showing, you know, like sitting there for three hours, just say, Hey, you have a torn ACL. I've reviewed all the data. So instead of trying to present this junk right here, right, which puts you to sleep, why not give them a bottom line? So I started thinking about like, wow, isn't that what we do when we, when, when we're on Twitter or we tweet. So as just some of the requirements that we kind of put out in front of ourselves before we decided to create any kind of system or, or a report, uh, we kind of said, hey, first of all, obviously, it has to be good enough for us to sell it. I really didn't want to change my sales process or really anybody who might use it. We didn't want to change their sales process, right? We just wanted to give you a tool or a report for you to be able to use in whatever process that you already have. We know we had to build value because it's the only way we're going to be able to sell these higher price tickets. We wanted to sell based on emotion. We know that that sells. Not only do we want to be able to use it with prospects, but I also to find a deficiency in my business, which was we sucked at doing quarterly business reviews, right? We would go in front of a particular client and, you know, we'd go in there, we have some ticket reports and a bunch of junk. They didn't care about that. 
And then the next thing you know, I, I pivot with to a proposal and I'm telling them they should buy something. And I think they didn't really look forward to quarterly business reviews because they knew I was going to go in there and try to sell them something. So we didn't do a great job at cross selling, uh, even referrals. You know, I started to think about it. Like, you know, what was I going to say to the client? Hey, if you really enjoy the firewall that I've sold you, maybe you know somebody else who might want a firewall, right? That never happened. But I thought, you know, if I could give them a, a pretty good experience in terms of this audit, maybe they'd know somebody else who already has an IT company, but maybe they were wondering if they're getting what they're paying for. So maybe they'd want to go through an audit as well. Uh, in terms of the report, it has to be easy to understand. We wanted it to be standalone. We wanted it to be qualitative, but also quantitative. Like we had to have a way to, to be able to measure and score what your environment was like. And I knew I wanted to have some infographics in there because I got tired of drawing pictures. So that was kind of, you know, the, the requirements, um, you know, that we came up with in terms of, of what we wanted to do. And that's kind of the history of it. Now, um, usually what I do at this point, I say, hey, before I am going to show you a demo of the system, which, uh, which Scott has graciously agreed to do, um, I go through what some of our subscribers are saying, because you have to understand something. I developed this for my own use. I said, I'm not great at selling. I want an easier way to, to sell and to sell more stuff and to higher ticket uh, items. I really had no intention initially of letting any of my peers use this, but something happened. OS 33 said, how are you selling all this cloud? So I showed them. Uh, Robin Robbins group, guys like Scott Beck said, hey, I heard you're doing pretty well. How are you selling this? And I showed them the audit report and then people started to say, hey, can we use that? And so we decided to then turn it into a product that other people could use, therefore fulfilling our, our why of, hey, if more people are using this, the true beneficiaries are those SMBs who end up with better technology. So this is kind of interesting to me when people started to send uh, testimonials in, because that's when we knew we had, hit the, we had hit the mark with this product, right? When I was able to sell with it, and sell and more easily, I thought, well, okay, I customized it for myself. But then when other people started to say, hey, I'm using it and it's working out really well, that's when we knew, all right, we have something here. So I'm gonna turn this over to Scott. Um, rather than me read what Scott said, I'm gonna let Scott kind of tell you a little bit about his experience and then maybe we can share his screen and uh, he can kind of show you how he's using it in his business today. All right. Well, my story kind of revolves similar to what, what Frank is saying. I've, I've been running an MSP. Uh, well, we didn't call it an MSP 14 years ago, but it evolved into an MSP. And uh, I always had a challenge going in to, to talk to clients and prospects. Uh, I get in front of them and go to start talking to them and I try to solve the problems in front of them or I start talking too technical and get down a rabbit hole and, and lose focus quite easily and wasted so much time trying to build out these reports and each one was different. So, you know, uh, the old process was I go in, I'd run some tool to get all this technical information then I come back and try to show them, hey, you've got 15 client accounts that, that haven't logged in in over 90 days and this is a risk and this is why, this is why you need to be managed. And, and, and much like Frank found, people really didn't care. They wanted to know, you know, uh, were they protected? Could they run? Where were their problems? Uh, and I really struggled in, in trying to to present that. Um, Frank talked to me one time when we were down to a, a meeting together at our IT, at IT mastermind group. And I said, all right, Frank, well, let me take a look at this. And I got signed up a, a, to do a demo. And I went to do my first presentation. And it took me about 45 minutes to, to get, lo get logged into the porter, portal and start to using the materials. Um, but let me put that in, in, in reference. What used to take me two or three hours, my first time through, it took me 45 minutes to create uh, a report that I was gonna actually present to the end client. Um, and then when we got to the end client uh, to show the report, um, I'm not sure if the, the screen is shared. Here, let me ask to see if I can bring up uh, the report. Oh, you can see my screen? So do you see- I assume it's your screen. Now I don't. I think you were seeing my screen. Uh, Scott, in the lower left, if you hit uh, present, you should be able to uh, present your screen share. All right, so my first time on this platform, guys, so, so I apologize in advance. 
uh, that it's not showing up properly. Um, but with the report, it, it's color coded. And once I went in and was able to show them this color coded report, Frank, I'll always remember the, the, the first time uh, that I sat down with this thing. And people looked at, uh, looked at it and went, I'm seeing a lot of red. Scott, I'm betting that's probably not a good thing. And I was able to talk about the key points of, of what was happening in their infrastructure. And it was able to keep me focused. I didn't end up going down any rabbit holes. And I could talk about end results to their actual business. You know, do people care that they didn't have those user accounts logging in, in the last 30 days? No. Was I able to show them that they were at risk from a security uh, perspective because they were using free antivirus? Uh, yes. Uh, those were the kind of things that they were concerned about. Was their data actually being backed up? That was something that they were concerned about as well. Um, so, so this presentation or this this platform that Frank has developed, you, you've got, you know, we all have similar things when we go out to talk to people. We talk about their infrastructure, their security, um, and, and how they're being managed, and how they're being taken care of. So Frank has made it very easy for us to have these talking points, these 27 points, and the 27 points are, are interchangeable as well, by the way. It's not just Frank's 27 points. Uh, you can pick and choose what, what fits for the client. Uh, bottom line is, it's now taking me about 15 minutes to make these presentations. I go out, I meet with the folks, I ask the questions, I do a little bit of fact finding. I will poke my nose around a little bit of the computers. Oh, it's free antivirus. Oh, they're not actually doing backups. Just enough information so I can create the report. I come back, I get the report created in 15 minutes, and we go back out, present, and, and offer them a solution. And I was able to say I was batting 100% before uh, but I've got one that's that's still lingering, so it hasn't closed yet. But it's it, it's totally changed the dynamic of the sales. Instead of sitting lingering, uh, and I don't know about Frank, but I'm now getting more people during that that sales presentation when I show them this stuff and talk to them. They're signing the deal that day. Uh, so we're we're talking a two visit close. Uh, sometimes it's it's you know it, it, depending on the client, I don't even have to get through the whole pitch. They end up just saying, "Hey, yeah, let's this this makes sense. Let's get this done." Uh, so that's been my my results with this. It's made my process faster. It's saving me a ton of time, and we're closing a lot more business. Uh, and to me, that's that's great. And, and that means that the clients are being being better served. So um, I know you were not able to share your screen, Frank. Do you have uh, something that you can share out? <clears throat> or Scott, sure. did you find the button down in the bottom left to share your screen? Yeah, it appears I don't have the plugin installed, and that's what's causing the issue. So sorry about that, guys. Okay. So, so Frank, if you could, um... yeah, let me go back here and see if uh, I can become the presenter. Quest to be presenter. There we go. go. All right. Let me log into audit here for a second. <clears throat> All right. You can see this, right? All right, let's see. How about this? See, my my lack of a plugin has just totally thrown Frank off. So so I'll apologize <laughs> for that in advance. Being Canadian, let me apologize in advance for that, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Oh, uh, you guys you apologize for apologizing. It's great. <laughs> uh, no, Frank, we're we're not seeing anything, which is weird since you were just sharing your screen. All right, hang on. They're gonna, I think we got it now. Their screen. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, Matt's saying all I can see is the two there pictures of two big guys. How about this? Perfect. There Frank. we go. Yeah. All right. We're working the bugs out here. <clears throat> all right. So luckily, we're not trying to sell the uh, the platform that we're, uh, we're using to present. <laughs> we're selling audit here. All right. So... Here's the dashboard. Um, let me let's jump in a little bit, give you an idea of what Scott's talking about. So, um, first and foremost, we, everything is based off of a template, right? We talked about this collection of 27 items. So let's just jump in and look at a collection here. Um, I'm gonna just pop right into one, and we'll talk about how this plays into the audit and what you can do. So <clears throat> we have four different quadrants here. The fourth one is actually for telecommunications. Uh, it's not part of the IT audit. It stands on its own, and you're able to disable or enable this quadrant as necessary. So 
if you're uh, if you're going to do an audit, somebody already has a you know VoIP phone system, or, or the, you know they're not you're not interested in pitching telecom, <clears throat> you can disable this quadrant. Um, so that one's optional. The other three are made up of nine boxes each, nine times three. There's your magical 27 point audit. Now, as Scott indicated, <clears throat> you know what are the nine uh, boxes under each of the three quadrants? How can I change them? Uh, you know, can I move them around? Uh, the answer is yes to all that. So we have three quadrants, infrastructure, security, and managed support and services. So those are kind of the three pillars here. If we go into edit, say underneath infrastructure, what we can now do is determine which nine items we'd like to do the audit on. Now, this is a template, which means that, you know, I kind of have <clears throat> my nine go-to items that I'm usually going to use, and I put them in an order that I'm comfortable in presenting. I can guarantee you it's different than what Scott does, right? So he's got a separate template that he's created that works for him. <clears throat> so you come up with whatever, whatever works for you. We do give you some starter templates just to give you a, like a starting point. A couple of things I want to talk about here. <clears throat> One, everything is drag and drop. So if you decide, you know, I don't want to talk about redundancy. I want to talk about servers first and then workstations should be second and managed wireless should be in the, in the middle spot. You can drag and move them around to wherever you'd like. You might also see that there are items on the left that are more interesting to you. So <clears throat> as an example, maybe you don't sell cloud the cloud backup or even care about it. So you could take this off. And maybe you have a cabling division in your business, right? And you're real passionate about wiring. So drag cabling on there. If you're likely to present and talk about it, then you know you could put uh, that on here. Um, you also notice that there's colors. And the reason why is because each of these have a weight. And if we're going to score this, it's obvious you know, cabling might not be as important as business continuity. Now, <clears throat> this is subjective. And this is where our, our IT personality comes into play. You know, we could all sit here and debate this, but, you know, Scott might say, well, cabling's clearly a two, and I might say, oh, no, that's a four. So weight it whatever way you want. I will show you how this will impact the scoring uh, when we get to that part. So for now, what you would do is you would simply come up with the nine boxes in whatever order or whatever weighting that you like and save it. And then you're going to do that for the other quadrants. And when you're done, you're going to name the template. In this case, it's test template and then you'll save it. From there, every time we do an audit, we're gonna base that off of the template. Now don't worry about being too perfect with the, you know, the 27 boxes because you might go on site and do some fact finding and then come back and realize, wow, cabling's not an issue at all. It's the switching that's a big problem. I didn't have switches on there. So and you Frank, that's make, a really great point because quite often, depending on once you go in and see the client, I have my template done up. These are the nine things I normally would talk about in each quadrant. But based on what you're seeing, go, ooh, okay, their backups are, are, are really rock solid, but they're, they're really terrible on X. You just swap them around as you, as you need them. Exactly. It, it, it's very convenient that way. You can call an audible. Once. <laughs> Well, not the good ones. <laughs> it all depends. I mean, you know, the goal here is is to get them to all green and try to get them to a 100, right? We know that you could probably do a 900 point audit if you went into a, an environment, right? But that's not going to help you sell any better, right? You're only going to confuse and complicate the sale. So what I do is I go after what I feel are the most impactful areas that are the ones that look awful, right? But also that are very important. And, you know, many times, you know, we're showing them where the deficiencies lie. Uh, sometimes, you know, you know, we go into environments, there's already an MSP and they're doing a pretty good job. And they may have a fair share of, of green boxes, which is good. But, you know, I can ferret out a couple of things. I'll say, oh, you're not doing dark web monitoring. Like, What's that? Right. So I like to stir it up a little bit. I know, Scott, you probably do the same thing, right? Where you'll go after some of the areas, maybe like uh, next generation endpoint protection. Maybe you say, hey, you're not using, uh, you know, behavior based AV. You're only using definition based AV. And, you know, you kind of educate them around that. And the other thing I'd say to that, uh, Steve, is, is when you go and have the interview with them originally and you've asked them some questions, you know, if they're very proud of they spent X number of dollars on this new cloud server. Yeah, I'll show it to them, and, and if it's in a good shape, I'll, I'll give them a low ball. 
Um, I would think if you showed up with everything in red, they might question your validity uh, and, and your honesty. So, so I, I would not say that everything should be red necessarily. I mean, if, if it's an honest to goodness assessment, you can back it up for reasons, sure, but I've never had an all red assessment. I, I think that would be bad. I, I don't think that sets the right tone. It, it would question Good. what you're presenting to them, if that makes sense. So, so can you can you guys show us like what does a what does a report actually look like? Because I mean, I, I see we can we can make some changes to the template and and what these squares are, but what what's a what's a completed one look like? Sure, it's a great question. And it's also a good lead in into the fact finder, which I want to show you as just a precursor to the report. So um, what you'll do when it comes time to put somebody into the system that you want to run an audit on, and it can be either a client, right? That would signify a quarterly business review or a prospect. So in our case here, you know, we can go in, let me just see where we have one. Let's see this one here. Here's a good example. So here's a, uh, an example of somebody that we've added to the system, ignore the top part, but the very first audit that you'll run at any time is always considered a baseline. So if it's a prospect, this would be, hey, here's where you're, where we are today. It's your baseline audit. But as soon as we enter them into the system, the very next thing that I do, and Scott alluded to, is we generate a fact finder. And this is what I take with me to go do the fact finding. And the first thing that I'm doing is I'm asking them for their top three issues right now in their environment. And I, and I have some probe questions. I say, why is this a problem? What is the impact? What's the urgency to fix? So I'm actually asking the client what they think is most important to them. And then that tells me what I should be going after and the areas that I should be focusing on on my audit, right? If they're super concerned about security, well, you better believe I'm going to look a little bit harder on the security side than I am, say, on the infrastructure side. So I use this uh, to try to, you know, guide me in where I should be looking. Um, we do have the template in the um, inside of the fact finder. So whatever template we put together that you said you wanted to base this uh, audit off of actually shows up with the boxes. So this is how uh, I stay on track. Scott, do you use this too? Do you kind of scribble in the boxes uh, when you're, when you're, when you're fact finding? With it's a great note taking pad. Yes. yes. Yeah. And you know what it does for me too? It forces me to, to be succinct, right? I'm not going to write a whole, a whole dissertation around, you know, like antivirus. Like I'm going to come up with already what I think is the bottom line here. So and it keeps on track for you. Would you also write in there? Oh, they've got Bitdefender, Gravity Zone, so their their AV's rock solid or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. How specific yeah. do you get in your note taking? Um, yeah, so you know what I do, I, I've learned. You know, I can run a scan and I could come back and show the prospect every single workstation, every single version of AV, and which ones are out of date or uninstalled, and it's overkill. Um, they're just looking for a bottom line. So if I look at four or five computers and I find four or five different versions of AV, I already know what their other 10 are going to look like. So I don't, I, mm. I, I personally don't run around to every single one. Now, you know, if I find five computers that all have the same version of AV, I, they're all up to date. I see that there's some other companies managed services agent on there. I know they're doing a good job. And, you know, and, and so certainly I'll say, yeah, you know, we've got Bitdefender or whatever. Uh, you know, corporately installed and being managed, you know, that's green. That's good. Um, and, you know, I'll move on to the next thing. So, yeah, I do, you know, I do some fact finding. Uh, some of it is an art. Some of it's a science. You know, sometimes we'll run some scans and some tools. But here's the thing I found also, since we're talking about fact finding, uh, which tool do you run as this? What, what, what scan do you run on the network, Scott, to find out if they're doing security awareness training? Right. Is, is there is there one? Is there, is there a tool that gathers that info? There is not. How about physical security? Anything you scan to see if there's a lock on the server room door? Uh, not effectively. Right. How about two-factor authentication? <laughs> so yeah. what I found more and more often, I said, these, these tools that we run on a network only gather a certain subset of data, right? What about all this other stuff? Like, where, how do I find that if the Sonic wall has the security subscriptions licensed, right? I, gotta, I have to log on and actually look. Like, there's no automated tool for that. So what I found was 
was some of the, uh, the, the data collection tools made me lazy in the past, right? Because I would only, I would only report on whatever we can, we can scan and pick up on. Now that I use this, I, I believe I'm being more holistic in my in my analysis of, of these 27 points. And so, not only are you more holistic, you're actually saving some time because uh, over time, since I first started using audit and, and talking with Frank, my process has changed. It used to be going in and running the scan. I'd come in, drop the 100 page report on it. And actually, originally, that's what I would try to present on. They didn't care. I got this tool. And I come in with the scan and drop that down on the table. And it looks impressive because it's 100 pages. And then I would present this. Great results. Then Frank challenged me to the same thing he just said. How, how do you know if there's two-form factor authentication? How do you know this? I was like, well, I don't, Frank. He goes, so why don't you try not doing the scans, having the talk, and see what results you get? And you know what? Didn't change. So now I'm saving myself a lot of time. Now, if, if it looks like a really terrible situation, I want to protect myself, sure, maybe I'll run that scan. So I know from an IT point of view what, what I'm getting into technically. Um, but as far as the sales process, uh, Frank was right. It, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the, the client doesn't, I don't want to say doesn't care, but that 100-page report that they don't understand because it's all Greek to them, um, I don't use it anymore. Yeah, that's that's more for us to use, right, to interpret for them, not, not for us to present the raw data to them. Well, it was back to your doctor analogy. So, right, exactly. So, so I'm, I'm going to throw this out there then, uh, you know, there's, I'll, I'm just going to say the name cause we all are thinking it rapid fire tools. Okay. So, and it's, and it's my webinar series. You don't have to worry about it. You won't get in trouble. I will. Uh, <laughs> so with, with that, so, so that's a fantastic tool. You know, it's, it's kind of like the tool to go out and audit your clients and get all this awesome data. So, you know, I, I've got people saying, um, is, is this supposed to replace um, rapid fire tools? And I say, you know, it sounds like you're almost saying yes, because you're saying, for the most part, don't run tools. But I almost think of this as like a compliment, like you run rapid fire or whatever scanning tool you want, you get your 100 page report, and then you use that to fill in these boxes to show the the potential client something that actually makes sense to them something that they're going to care about looking at that's where i started off yeah. as steve i'll tell you what i still use rapid fire tools i'm still a partner but i've changed how i'm using it now i'm using it to actually oversee the network and changes for quarterlies and, and what may have happened in the network i don't use it as part of the sales process anymore i i don't need it and a prospect doesn't need doesn't i have found they don't want to see the 100 page report um, do I still use rapid fire tools in those environments as, after I've won the deal? Yes. Yeah. And, and I'll, and I'll add to that. I, i never saw this as a replacement. Um, it was always as a compliment to, to tools like that. Um, I didn't think it worked well to present the raw data in a hundred page report and it wasn't winning me any sales deals. So I thought this was uh, a better, uh, aggregation report where you can kind of use this to pull together everything, not only the stuff that you collected on the network, but also all those other things and tie it all together. Um, so I view it as complimentary, not, not as a replacement for it. And I just want to throw out there, uh, someone just said, I don't trust this guy. He has Yahoo bookmarked. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that? No, at the top? <laughs> no, that's pretty, it's, it's that's somewhere probably, else. Just, that's Just probably, uh, well, that's, <laughs> that's probably, uh, I, you know, it, I'm the plumber with the leaky faucets, you know, I got stuff all over here that doesn't work. I'm browser <laughs> and I just, I don't have time to fix it. So these are just the stock, uh, ones that come with, I think, Firefox. So anyway, let's jump into, cause you asked me about the report and I want to make sure I, I get to that. Um, so now it comes time to actually do the audit. So, you know, you've gone out on site, you've gathered your information, you've used rapid fire you've used the fact finder. Now you have all this data and you're ready to summarize and to tell them, you know, what they need to know. So, so now we come in here and we click on summary statements and, you know, we get the question, Hey, how do I import the data? Well, think about the doctor, right? If there was a way to import all my lab work and give me a bottom line, I wouldn't have needed the doctor, right? I could have just walked up to like some kiosk, taken my blood and said, Oh, you have high, high cholesterol, you know, don't eat cheese. So I needed the doctor to review everything to interpret all that. And that's where you come in. 
Now, it sounds like a daunting task, but it's actually a lot easier than you think. So like in this case, whatever data we've gathered on, say, the server, we can create a summary statement out of this. If I said to you, you've got to tweet something to me, bottom line about the server, you could come up with it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll use something a little bit easier. I won't even, rather than confuse you on that. Let's say we're talking about antivirus, right? And if I said to you, okay, we need to come up with one or two statements that are green, red, or yellow. So I think we'd all say, well, red would be, we don't have any antivirus, right? Or maybe, <laughs> maybe yellow is, well, you've got a little bit of everything. You know, you got a McAfee over here, you got a Norton over here, you got a Bitdefender over there. And a green so yellow, is- Yellow could be <clears throat> yes, but it's not standardized. Red is, it just doesn't exist. Or not centralized managed or right. whatever uh, that is to you. Yeah, and, and, and like what it boils down to is red requires immediate attention, right? Yellow, hey, that needs improvement. Green, that's satisfactory. Like, so green might be, oh yeah, you know, you're, you're, the guy you're using today is pushed out ESET and it's up to date, it's corporately managed, that's great. You know, you get, it's, on, it's on every computer. So you could come up with these summary statements and then you reuse them over and over, right? Every once in a while you come off, you come up with a one-off type of thing where you go, oh, I gotta create a custom one. So here's what you can do. You're able to go through the system. In this case, I might say, hey, the server's within seven years old. It's out of warranty, but it is running a supported operating system. Done. Maybe I say, yeah, you know, that server, that's a five. That's really, that's more important in, in this particular environment. Uh, backup disaster recovery. There's a bunch of statements in here. Some of these I've created. Some of them are soup starter we give you. Maybe there's not one in there that represents your situation. So you type up whatever you want, pick the color, and then you simply decide, you know, we're going to show this or not show this in a future pick list. And then you could add it. If you show it in a future pick list, now it's available to you. If we skip it, it doesn't clog the pick list. So the more you use the system, Scott, I think you were alluding to this. Like the more you use it, the more answers you have, the faster it is to actually do these audits, right? Because you find yourself probably using some of the, some of, or if not all of the existing drop down answers, right? Yeah, that's what that first 45 minutes was, was putting in some of my personality into the into the, the answers, but now it's like 15 minutes. Great. <laughs> we also talked about calling that audible. You know, you go out to that, that prospect, you think, hey, here's the nine things that we're interested in. You find out that they could care less about remote accessibility, but the wiring is a disaster, right? You got, you got cables dangling from the drop ceiling, the, you know, the old jack and a beanstalk wiring you know, scheme. So maybe you say, all right, I'm going to call an audible, even though I had, you know, something else on my template, uh, I'm going to put cabling on here. I'm going to wait that as a four and I'm going to come in here and say, you know, that it's a yellow. So you come so, up with whatever you'd like here. Okay. Sorry. Um, you know, something I, something I didn't think about, you know, I, I've trialed this a couple <laughs> times, I'm not going to lie. Uh, multiple email addresses, and uh, <laughs> uh, I, that was you. <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> so, uh, so, so something I did was, you know, I think I was, I was thinking too much about this. I was, I was almost overthinking this, and I was like, oh man, what, what are they going to think is the most important things? And it sounds like you're, you're saying, no, no, no. They, they don't even care about that much. You should be thinking about what things you can actually, you actually care about, the things that you actually specialize in, the things that you know you do well, and have those be your nine boxes in each of these things, initially, um, I mean, almost. Yeah, I mean, it's, you're, you're trying to do the best job that you can for the prospect, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're trying to point out to them, and I always tell them when we see the report, I said, this is an education process for you as well. Many times, nobody has ever presented something like this to you. So you may have no idea right now where you sit, right? You have an IT company you're working with, you know, you pay them a thousand bucks a month, but do you really know what you're, what you're getting for that? So, um, so when we're done with, uh, with picking these summary statements, let me just get ourselves to a report and we can kind of speak more intelligently. Um, we're going to speed ahead, but what you would do is you'd fill in all the rest of these boxes. And when you're done with that, it'll actually create uh, a thumbnail along with a score. So that way we see where we're at. I'm going to jump out and I'm actually going to pull up um, a real prospect here that we worked on. Let me just uh, find one that I can show you. 
Um, let's see. And where are you guys located so we know uh, <coughs> we can steal them? Yeah, you could steal this. <laughs> you could steal this one in New Jersey. <laughs> so, All right. This was a uh, this was a baseline audit. They actually have an IT company and, and you know, not doing a terrible job. Um, they scored a 53. Um, if we, I'll just go in real quick just to show you what the actual audit screen looked like, and then I'll generate the report. So they were spending a thousand bucks a month with this company. Um, they scored a 53. So we introduced this concept of effective IT monthly expense because like if you're spending a thousand dollars and then my, my proposal is 1800 or so say 1500, right? 1500 is more than a thousand. But if I am delivering like a 98 on that score, then it's at a greater efficiency level. So what we try mm -hmm. to do is to try to show you, all right, based on where you are today, spending a thousand dollars to get a 53 at the same rate of spend to get to a 100 it's going to cost you 1886 right so it, it's like kind of like a unit price like when you go to the store you you buy something and then you find out that you know the razors that you're that you're buying are actually you know fifty dollars per you know per hundred or something right well wouldn't you want to spend thirty dollars per hundred if you had the, had the ability you know to get a better uh, rate so anyway we introduced this concept. Um, let me show you what we do um, on a report. Uh, I always, after I do the baseline audit, and I usually do the baseline audit within 24 hours of meeting with the prospect because the information is, is and the conversation is fresh in my head. Then I might take a couple days or a week to actually come up with what I'm going to propose. So I can come in here and clone the baseline plan, which will pop it up here now as a proposed plan. And then I come in here and I edit this and I go through a proposal and I know what I'm going to try to sell to them. And so I'm now remediating these different things, you know, Hey, maybe, you know, maybe it's a cloud deal. Maybe it's not, whatever. Um, I'm going through and I'm turning these boxes green, right? So if I'm going to be selling them cloud to cloud backup, if I'm going to be moving them to office 365, if I'm going to sell them a new switch, if I'm going to, you know, maybe put in and in, in, uh, dark web uh, monitoring, whatever it is. When I'm done with my proposal, my proposal came out to sixteen eighty three a month. That was what how much our solution would would cost them. So it's six hundred dollars more than they're spending today, but it's it's at, but they get a ninety two now. So let's look at what this looks like now on an actual report. And so I come in here, I click print report. I say I'm going to compare it to the proposed. I hit generate report, and in like seconds we have this report. Now, I think Scott alluded to spending hours creating this, and I could I get a test that it probably took me days because I I just get bored and I go do something else and I'm like oh man I got to really get this done next day I go back and I start stitching things together every report looked different and it took me forever I dreaded doing these things so now you have a report it's branded for you prepared for your client and <clears throat> we go through it the first page kind of tells them what we're going to tell them. And we have no page numbers on here. So if you say, oh, this is the worst page I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe it's in the report. Just take it out. There's no page number. No one will know that it's missing. Um, base plan, all the information that you put in the system cascades back to the report. And then we have the summary impact page. And, and, and this is the page that always gets the prospect across the table. Their eyes, for me, always get big when they see this. Yep. I mean, don't they... Don't they say like, wow, what's all the red? Or they go, oh, I only got a 53. Like, it, like you know you have them at this point. And, and the, key, the keys here are one is simplicity and two is emotion, right? Because you've made it, you've simply summarized it for them. It's emotional because they're like, whoa, like, oh, wow, there's a lot of red and yellow. And then for me, Scott, and probably for you too, right? The next thing they say is, well, what's the red and yellow, right? They ask you what it is. They want to know. Yeah. I, I, did anybody ever, did everybody ever ask you like in your, in your old presentations, a hundred page reports, Hey, can you please go into greater detail on the, on, on the uh, antivirus? Like usually they're falling asleep at that point. Right. Yeah, so, their eyes are gla glazed <clears> over. Yep. And I, and I point out, I say, listen, you know, this is a uh, overview of what we found. It's the 27 point, Audit. It's a visual representation. Yeah, you're right. There is quite a bit of red and yellow. 
Uh, we scored this. So numerically, you got a 53. Our goal is a 100. Um, you told me you're spending a thousand dollars a month, you know, and this is where I introduced the money talk, you know, effectively to get to a 100 at the rate you're spending on straight line, you're going to spend $1,800. Now we could argue all day long. It's not a straight line. It's curved. It's, it's a little bit of a, an angle, whatever. The point is, is that they're likely going to need to spend some additional money to, to, to do a better job in the environment. So I want them to understand that you, this is what you get for a thousand bucks. You get a fat 53, right? If you're happy and okay with this, then keep doing it. But you asked me what's wrong and now I'm going to tell you. And I've got bottom line. Remember, this is the doctor speaking now. Here's the bottom line on your server. Here's the bottom line on your backup disaster recovery. And I use this as a talking point to tell them how bad it sucks that you're using tape backup or why business continuity is going to be an issue if there's a hurricane or someone steals all your stuff or there's a fire, right? And I can go through these nine points. We show a thumbnail over here so they know kind of where they're at, show a section score, and we do this three times. And then what we get to are the infographics because if you got a red or a yellow, I want to make sure you understand why it's important when I leave. Remember we talked about that what I was leaving behind before was a proposal. Now I'm leaving this behind. This they can read when they go, what did he say about business continuity or, or you know, backup disaster recovery? Well, they could read it. And these infographics were developed, you know, we have a, a graphic designer. Um, they're, they're, they're developed and designed to be simplistic to explain the concept and also explain why it's important and remind them what score they got, right? So this, is a, this becomes a really cool leave behind. Uh, then I cascade over to the comparison plan and I'll tell the prospect straight up, say, you know, based on what you told me, what was important to you and based on the results of our audit, I've put together a new, a, a proposed, a proposal. And this is what it would look like if we did the audit after we implemented that proposal. What's always funny to me is what do you think they say when they see this? They go, What's that red box? <laughs> like, they're like mad. Like, how dare you present me something with a red, still has red or a yellow box on it, right? And I, that's when I know they understand it. But before we dig in, I say, listen, this will get you to a 92. There's still a couple things we might need to improve upon, but as like a first phase, now you're all the way at a 92. Ours would cost you 1683 a month. But let's take a look at what you get. And now I go through this and I talk about, hey, there's a BDR. Hey, we're on Office 365, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, physical security. Hey, this is a client or a prospect that says a server in their, in their office, right? We're not going to build a data center. So this becomes a, a good uh, cross-sell opportunity later on down the line if I get them as a client to try to sell them to cloud, right? Hey, get rid of the server, right? Now the physical security is not an issue. But for now, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to start somewhere. And then what I end up on is this comparative analysis page. And this is where I usually do my comparison. I say, let me just, let's, let's review. Here's where you are today. You're spending $1,000 to get a 53. You got a bunch of stuff that's wrong in the environment. And here's where you could be with us. It's, you get a 92, it's 1683. Sure, it's more than you're spending today, but it's less than what you are effectively spending if you were on, you know, if you spent on the same rate you were going today. Um, and that's when I stop talking. <laughs> I say, what would you, what would you like to do? Where would you like to start? You know, and you know, a lot of times I can get them to make the decision. Like Scott said, if I, if I can see that they want to think about it, what I do is I schedule the third meeting and I say at that meeting, you decide what you'd like to do. And what I started doing I got this from Robin Robbins is if they decide that they don't want to use me, uh, one, we charge for the audit, right? So we charge 997. So what I do is I have a declination of service, which basically says something to the effect of that you, I've reviewed your environment. I presented you with an audit and you've decided to not take my recommendations. You sign it, right? You, you're declining to take my advice and you owe me 997 and we appreciate your time and we hope it was a good education process and you know you can keep the report you'd be surprised how many people the pen shakes when i ask them to sign that and then they go like well you know maybe what we can is there something we can do in the middle so 
it, it creates an interesting sort of dynamic. I'm not sure, Scott, if you do anything like that, but that, that seems to have a pretty, uh, pretty good uh, effect on nudging them towards the finish line for me. Yeah, with my last law firm, it was one of those, uh, let me think about it. And I ended up basically saying something similar that, that you did, Frank. I, ha I didn't have a formal letter, but I think I'll add that into the repertoire. Yeah, cool. So, so that's that. Um, I know we also were going to say uh, a couple words about using it for a quarterly business review. So let's uh, pretend, you know, we've got uh, a client or maybe it was a prospect and they became a client. Um, you can use this kind of, you know, to track things all along. So, you know, maybe you, you'll have a baseline audit, you have a proposed or a couple proposed audits, and then eventually they become a client. And now what you can do is clone it as a baseline. I'm sorry, clone it as a QBR plan, and it creates a new section. And, you know, there's times where their score could go down. So you'll see here, you know, this particular client, their score got worse from quarter two quarter four to quarter two of 2017. And if we go in there and we look, um, the reason why was because I introduced a couple of new products that I thought they should have. So before that quarter, we didn't have security awareness training. Now that was because we weren't selling it. Uh, we became a, a reseller of no before. And so I went to this client and uh, it's a large nonprofit. And I said, you know, you're not doing security awareness training. That's a deficiency now under security. So of course they said to me, well, how much is that? And I just happened to have a proposal in hand and that uh, we sold them. We sold them that we also sold them cloud to cloud backup. They're using office 365 email. So we sold them that uh, we were also able to upsell and uh, get a new internet security appliance in because the one they had was in limited retirement mode. So we use this to upsell. Um, now, if they said to me, now nah, we're not interested in mobile device management. You know, uh, our employees will never agree to that. I'll say, okay, but I can guarantee you there's still going to be a red box on the next quarterly business review, right? And that was, a, that was a key for us because in a quarterly business review, I remember in the, in the old days, I'd go in, I'd talk about something like MDM. They'd say, now nah, we're not interested. And I go, oh, okay. And then I wouldn't talk about it again, ever. <laughs> like a year later, the client would be like, Hey, someone stole my uh, my phone. Do we have the ability to uh, you know to lock it or wipe it? Oh no, you know if you had mobile device manager, you'd be able to do that. Oh well, why don't we have that? Well, you told me you didn't want it. When did I tell you that, right? So they for, you know they forget. So now I don't let them off the hook ever. They'll see a red box on this report for as long as you know we keep running them. And what's funny is it's almost like people want to buy green boxes. Eventually they go, well, what's that red box again? How much is that? Oh, it's only 20 bucks a, you know, a year per device. All right, you know, let's do that now. And so we've been successful at upselling and cross-selling. Let's face it, the green boxes are good for them, and it's good for us because we're selling stuff. But it's also good for them. I mean, I'm never going to apologize, right, for selling security awareness training or two-factor authentication to a small business, right? It's good for them to have. So this is how we use this then going forward in a quarterly business review uh, type of capacity. Scott, do you run any uh, QBRs? Uh, you use this for QBRs too? We started to, yes. Okay. So we tell people who are thinking about using the system, right? Because not everybody has a prospect that they're ready to, to run an audit on, but everybody's got a client. So what I say is, is you sign up for the free trial. It's, it's fully functional for 15 days. There's no watermarks. You have the entire system at your disposal. Pick one client and then do an audit on them and use it in a QBR situation. It's easy because you know, you know all the answers, you know what they have, and then you could take the report and go upsell or cross-sell some stuff. And you'll sell something, and then that something will make you more money, and then you say, wow, I've got enough money now to pay for, for audit and to use the actual system. So you know, and, that's and the recommended course. I'm sorry, real quick, just because we're coming up to the coming up to the end of the hour. Um, mm -hmm. Someone asked if we can share some things before the end of the hour, since some people have to go back to work, unfortunately. Um, I did share off all of those items that uh, were put backstage. So if you guys check, you should see the handouts and resources. If, uh, if some attendees mm -hmm. could let me know if they're seeing those correctly, that would be great. Um, also, one of the questions was, can we review pricing here before the end of the hour? 
Of course, yep. So we're right, we're right at that point now. Anyway, so uh, I believe the resources that we have um, we've we've put out there is a frequently asked questions document, um, and it's also a uh, a sample report. So you could actually see uh, what's there. So here's the uh, the offer for today. Um, if you if you work your way over to the website www.auditforit.com, um, there is the 15 day free trial. Um, there is normally a $199 onboarding fee. Uh, what we what we normally do during the onboarding process is we work with you to create your first quarterly business review. So you pick a client, we put them into the system with you, and we go through an audit. You tell us what you want to audit, what the, so we help you with the summary statements. When we're done, usually takes about an hour, you have a document in your hand, you can go do a QBR, hope you make some money. Um, we'll waive that onboarding fee if you sign up for the trial today. That's only for today. Um, <clears throat> if you uh, you go there, you register. If you have any questions or anything, you can email Mike at Audit for IT. He's one of our partners uh, who handles uh, the, the support and sales side of things for us. Um, the pricing, it's $197 per month for the ultimate plan. That's the That includes everything. Um, that's the package. You get uh, unlimited number of audits that you can run for an unlimited number of auditees. Uh, you can have up to five people within your organization to do audits. If you need more than five, there's a small per user charge to add it on. But for most people, five is plenty. Um, so so, I got to start asking some tough questions. Sure. Are you said that's a hundred uh, uh, one ninety seven. That's unlimited audits for unlimited auditees. Mm -hmm. On the website, it's twenty five hundred auditees. Which yeah, it's practically unlimited to me. It's practically unlimited. Yeah, you know, I, I so. You got me on that. Right now, there there is a limit of 2,500. We have nobody even close to that in the system. So I always tell people it's unlimited. Um, if you've got 2,500 people and you're doing that much with our system, I guarantee you we'll just we'll, we'll increase it and just let you keep using it. So for all intent and purposes, <laughs> it, it, it's unlimited. <laughs> yeah, and I just want to say because I know I've heard other MSPs say something about oh, it's it's 197 a month, based on the amount of time that I've saved in doing these. And, and the close rates that are happening, um, it, it, I've made my money back like with, within weeks. Uh, and I keep telling Frank that. I, I think he's going to jack my rates on me, I'm sure. <laughs> so I've, so one of the questions is, how long does one audit typically take, Frank, the, the $979 ones or 997 or whatever you charge? So I do, I do three meetings. Uh, so I do my first meeting is my fact finding meeting. I usually find that takes about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and then my second meeting is when I present the findings, that's about an hour. Um, and then if I have to come back for a third meeting, that's usually a half an hour because I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to get into all the technical minutia. They all have some questions. I'll answer those, but I'm trying to get them to sign. Uh, so we can, you know, have a basis to move forward. So that's how long it takes me meeting wise to run the actual audit. Um, I could probably knock an audit out with a proposal in about an hour total. So Scott, I don't know, you want to add to that? Um, my on-site initial, because I've been doing two, two shot meetings or, or two shots. Um, mm -hmm. So it's about an hour, hour and a half, as you said, during the initial meeting. Um, the next one's probably going to be uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, and the amount of time it takes me to do the actual create the audit, uh, I say 15 minutes, but maybe it'll leg on to 20 or 25. But this for me is it's less than 30 now that I've got it tuned up the way I want it. Cool. So you're so you're saying that you spend approximately 90 minutes total, Scott? Yeah, it'd be 90 sure? minutes to two hours total for for that 997. Okay. So. Um, so I see that it's 197 a month for the ultimate plan. How much is the uh, I'm, I'm poor and tiny plan? 197 a month. <laughs> so, so it's really the only plan. Yeah, we actually, we had other tiers that this, we had the ultimate plan was originally 397. And okay. uh, the lower plans were, they had less available to you is it limited different things. And, Based on feedback and then based on our desire to simplify this, we basically rolled everything down into uh, 197 uh, for, for what was originally a, almost a $400 a month uh, plan. 
And we had people using it at, at that higher level. People were saying to us, you know, we're, we're closing deals worth thousands of dollars a month. Like this thing has paid for itself for, you know, for several years already in advance. So we kind of feel like uh, that, the, you know, from, from a pricing perspective, you're getting pretty good value for what this tool will enable you to do. So, and, and I think there's a lot to be said about um, the, the value in the tool and how much time it saves and blah, 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 and all that's great, right? But, but, and it is, it's an awesome tool. Don't, don't get me wrong. Okay. Um, however, uh, what, what, is there anything that you're willing to do for like the small MSP? Because I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. It's, it's a great tool. I, I see the value, but for a lot of smaller companies that are maybe just getting their, their feet wet with managed services, you know, $200 is a lot of money, especially when, there's only one user and maybe they only have 15 customers as it is. So, I mean, are you willing to, you know, make a plan or work with someone on a one-off basis to, to help like ramp them up? Um, at this time there, we don't have anything. I mean, we have talked to some people who have suggested that maybe we make a pay as you go plan. So you pay per audit. Um, that would be great. Right. The, the only thing I, is, is that I that 15 bucks an audit, <laughs> right? But you know what, you know what that does is it, it turns audit into a break fix product, right? Which was like, as MSPs, like break fix is a bad word, right? We want like the all you can eat for a monthly fee. It's the same kind of concept here. So, you know, if we say, well, just, just pay when you use it, it kind of, uh, it kind of goes back to like a break fix kind of world, but I hear what you are saying and, and we are, considering uh, what we could do to try to make a lower price product. But for now, you know, we find that this was uh, the threshold that like most people are willing to say, yeah, $200 a month, it's 200. But I mean, I spend, I spend way more than that on tools that make me no money. Right, Scott? I mean, if you look at some of our tool sets that we have that are necessary evils in our business, uh, you know, I, I pay, I have go to webinar, I think, right? And I think I pay $200 a month for go to webinar. It's just a tool for me to do webinars. I, you know, it doesn't make me money per se or help me sell. So, you know, I look at this as something that is a, is a sales enablement type of, of product. So I'll take it from, from a different point of view and I've got no skin in the game, just to be clear. Uh, uh, Frank doesn't pay me to come on these things. I, I do this because I believe in the product. Um, mm -hmm. if, if you're, if you can't invest $2,400, to build your business in the run of a year. And I know I've made way more than that, uh, even with the sales that I've done. And we're going out and we're talking to other businesses about spending money to, to build their business and protect their business. I, I, I almost question, you know, if, if you can't build your business, how, how are you gonna help someone else build theirs? And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being kind of direct and blunt on it, but you know, we, we all have to take care of our business at some point. So. I, I know when I started out, I was a one man band 14 years ago. I've now grown into four and, and it's painful to spend money. I get that. But until mm -hmm. I started spending some money to build my business, that's when business started coming to me because my mindset changed. I, I went from being a, a, a scarce minded individual worrying about where am I going to get my next paycheck to, to, Hey, let me spend some money on this. And I took a leap of faith and now it's uh, working much better for me. So uh, sorry to get on a soapbox on that, but but I hear quite often yeah. from people going, hey, I really don't want to be able to spend $197 a month. It's expensive. I get that. We None of us like to spend money, but yet you're going to yeah. sit down in front of a prospect and try to tell them they need to spend money on their business. Uh, yet we're, some some of us are reluctant to do it. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't, I, I don't follow that mindset. Sorry, I'm so, off my soapbox. So, and, and, and looking at it from your perspective, I mean, you know, a, a couple hundred dollars a month, 2,400 a year, depending on what tools you're using, that could be 50 to 100 uh, RMM agents or or 100 to 200 AV agents, um, which, I mean, when you, when you think about it like that, I mean, okay, so this really isn't that much considering I would make a ton more if, if I could use this and sell and actually utilize that many agents. Does that make so, sense? So I think if, if you can sell it, uh, if you if you spend this money and you sell those packages, you'll be generating the revenue to go buy the other tools. It, it's a self fulfilling prophecy in, in my mind. You know, yeah. if you can sell it, you're going to make more. So you you got to sell. And, and 
I, I don't know, guys. If you're a technician-based mindset like like I was, I'm an ex-radio guy. You'd think I would have been perfect getting in front of uh, prospects and being able to talk. Well, I couldn't. I, I go down the rabbit hole. I try to solve the problems. Frank's system has really been able to help me focus those conversations, and the deals close now much faster. And you, I was, you know, I've I've been thinking the whole time. You've got a voice for radio. Yeah, and a face for one too. <laughs> I was I wasn't gonna say that. You said it, not me. <laughs> now um, I do have some other questions. Now that I beat you guys up on price, um, can this generate reports using any other languages than English? Uh, the answer is yes for the um, for the currency. So it's so it's only an English version in terms of the verbiage. But we do have the ability in the setup screen for you to pick your uh, your currency. So you know we've got some users that <clears throat> are in Australia or in Great Britain, and I know there's you know different got symbols it. for that. So yeah, you can pick what your preferred uh, currency is. Are you considering uh, bringing on board a, a translator for Spanish or French or German or anything like that? Uh, it's been discussed, but it's low on our, our roadmap right now because we have a lot of other things that we're working on. Um, two-factor. Does it support two-factor for logging in? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Um, let's see here. Can – and I already know the answer to this. Can you take the output from rapid fire or scan circle and input that magically into a report? No, that's where you come in. No, you that's, that, that's, uh, <laughs> you're the doctor, so you have to, you have to translate. Fair enough. Um, why can't someone do this with their RMM or PSA? It seems like so, it would be a one-time setup with nominal <clears throat> updates. Uh, you mean like create something on your own and, and use it as a post thought? Is that what you mean? I'm not sure if they mean creating it on your own or somehow you like integrating the two. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with the creating on your own because we have had some people say, well, you know, I could do this in Excel or I, you know, I could just create some infographics on Fiverr. And to be honest, you absolutely could. Um, you know, right. that was what we did initially. But what I would say to you is that it takes a lot of time and work to put these, put it together manually and to do all of that. And so like that's the hard way to do it, which is certainly possible. And I think if, if, you, if you do nothing else other than take some key takeaways, which is, hey, use summary statements, uh, use color to sell and invoke emotion and to draw attention to the problem areas and use some infographics to easily explain that even if you do it manually on your own, you're gonna improve upon you know, how you sell um, we're just trying to make it as easy as possible for you. And for, and Scott mentioned it. And for me, time is money. I spent so much time trying to do these things manually and it was killing me. I mean, I was out there marketing saying, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do an audit. And when somebody would say, yes, I want you to do an audit. I'd go, Oh, because I used to have to do an audit. And, yes. it, and, it, and it, it was, and it was only because of the time it took. It wasn't because I didn't know how to do it. It was just because I didn't want to spend three days working on it. Now, um, with this tool, it's much quicker. And I think Scott alluded to it. You know, the $200 is well worth the hours and days that, I, that I've that i now saved doing it manually or, or trying to do it on my own. I think the big question is raise your hand if you've had an audit to do or a sales presentation to do. And you wait until the night before because you just dreaded <laughs> having to do it. And then you spent two or three hours the night before to get ready for it. That was me all the time. <laughs> I, I just I do like that. doing. I I can honestly say I probably spend six to eight hours on the same paragraph, making sure everything's perfect for weeks. Yeah, and, and that was that was I wouldn't say weeks, but yeah, I was like you know three four hours the day before, the night before. Um, just took so much time, and now I'm you know I don't want to use the term banging them out, but yeah, now I sit down and I'm banging them out. It's taken me 15, 30 minutes. Um, done. And I know how to present it because it's in the same format each and every time. I don't have to guesswork. I don't have to figure out, oh, where was I going to take that talking point next? Because the presentation is the same format every time. So you you build a lot of scale of, of comfort when you're presenting with this system. Um, 
Um, someone said, wait, you report on two factor, but you don't even use it yet. Correct. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no, um, I mean, the information that you have in the system here is summarized data that, you know, that you're, you're putting, you're not actually storing any of the actual factual information. So, you know, there's nothing in there that's like personal yeah, identify information for your client. To make sure you, you got a client name, you got an address. If you've got Google, um, you can get the same stuff. It's, there's no credit cards or anything in it. Name and address. Um, Ed asked what tools I suggest using in order to perform good audits. Um, honestly, I mean, I'll install my RMM tools sometimes, but most of the time, you know, I'm, I'm looking at smaller shops too. I'm, I'm focused on the 20, 30 and fewer. Um, and, uh, and I would use my eyeballs and a conversation. And I know that, uh, Scott and Frank both said that, you know, sometimes they'll use a rapid fire, but most of the time they're doing the exact same thing. They're just eyeballing it, having a conversation. And uh, that's how they're coming up with the squares. And when, when they actually do an onboarding, that's when they do, you know, that's when they'll install the RMM tool and do the, the true information gathering and documentation and all that other good stuff. Is that, is that accurate? For me, it is, uh, yes. Yep, for me, it is too. And, and you have to keep in mind, you know, we're trying to get a client here, right? So if we were saying, hey, um, we're going to do a 937 point audit, that would be overwhelming, right? But we know there's a lot more than 27 things. So, you know, the, these 27 items are designed to help you sell, right? I mean, the bottom line here is you, we're trying to help you get a new client. And then when you go in, you're going to do a better job than the last guy did because you've got this tool. You could easily explain to them what's wrong and they're going to say, yes, let's fix it. And you're going to make more money and they're going to be in better shape at the end of the day. Um, once you got your RMM tools in there, sure, you might ferret out another 27 or 50 different things, right? And that's what you could, you know, work on in terms of upselling uh, to them over time. Excellent. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? I believe I've asked everything. Yeah, I've asked everything. Uh, oh, I, I have a question. What's what's kind of on your roadmap? And I'm not asking for firm deadlines or anything. Just you know, what kind of things are you are you planning on implementing in the future? Because I mean, it, it seems like such a complete product to me. What else could you possibly add? So. The things that we're working on today, right, we're adding uh, additional infographics into the system to catch up on, on the audit items that we've added over time. And the number one request that we've gotten <clears throat> was for there to be some flexibility in terms of customization. So we're looking at um, taking the telecom quadrant, and right now that's kind of the optional, either it's enabled or disabled. What we're looking at doing is having that quadrant be fully customizable. So, you know, we have, we had one MSP say, you know, we sell security systems, you know, like alarm systems and cameras. So we'd love to have it say, uh, you know, uh, alarm systems and then have nine or more auditable items that you could create, uh, you know, the audit items and then you come up with your summary statements. So we're looking at having a, uh, a quadrant that you could add into the system and you know that means it would be potentially a 36 point audit right so be 27 uh, plus whatever the nine are that you could come up with in that uh, that one area so that's where a lot of our focus is we're also looking at some quarterly business review type calendaring and scheduling and some uh, additional reports where we can show trends so maybe if you have a client and you run one of these every quarter you can have a report that shows, hey, you know, here's the last, you know, seven QBRs that we've done and we're showing you that you're trending up. Um, so that way you can kind of show that, you know, you've been improving their environment or at least maintaining it over time. Um, w would you, Frank, like to comment on any of the comments in there? In the chat? Uh, <clears throat> You know, I, I haven't actually been reading the comments. Uh, I've been letting you moderate. Um, Why don't I think... we stop sharing the screen? Um, we can do there that. We 
Um, Where do I find the comments? Uh, is that under this little box? Up in the oh, top here. right, oh, yeah. there should be like a chat bubble. Yep, there you I go. see. Got it. Uh, you know, I mean, we've covered a lot of, uh, of ground here. So I think uh, in the interest of time, rather than try to answer every comment, I th what I would encourage people to do is to try it, right? It's fully, it's, it's free for 15 days. You don't have to put a credit card in. Try it. Um, if it doesn't work for you. If you don't like it, then you just don't sign up after 15 days. Uh, what we find, though, is after we onboard you and help you do a QBR, there's a really good chance that you're going to sell something and you become a believer. And then, you know, you can speak passionately like Scott. Um, it's not for everybody, uh, you know, or, or maybe you'll find you just don't want to spend $200 a month. And we understand that as well. But uh, I think, you know, at sure. this point, um, you know, the offer we have is we're, we're going to waive the fee on the onboarding, uh, which, you know, we hope is, uh, is, is, you know, something that that's beneficial for the participants of today's call. And uh, you know, try it out, and we and we'll answer all those additional questions too while we onboard you. So I think that's probably uh, the best next step. Excellent. And um, do you do you have a ballpark? Like, what's your retention rate on on people after the fifteen day trial? I'm curious. Ooh, uh, what's the retention rate on a fifteen day free trial? Uh, we find that the, the now that we switched our model and what was happening was people were signing up for 15 days and they would say to us, you know what? I ran out of 15 days and I didn't have a prospect that I could run it on. So we're just going to cancel it. Right. So we were finding people were canceling and making comments before they actually ever even tried the system. Right. Which was unfair for both of us. So uh, sure. what we decided was that this onboarding now that we, we've added, it takes more time for us but it uniquely positions you with a report in your hand. And it's not some sample report. It's actually a report for, you know, your client, the law firm or the accounting firm or whatever it is that you can then go and sit down with. And what happens is people find out, wow, this is that no one's ever presented like this before. And I sold some stuff. And then we have a much greater uh, incident or rate of people that are sticking around. So I would say right now, something around 60 to 70% of the people that we onboard uh, through a trial then commit to, uh, you know, being a paying customer. The others, I think, you know, maybe they didn't have uh, the, you know, an overwhelmingly positive experience uh, in the QBR process. Maybe they were like, ah, eh, you know, client really didn't care one way or the other. Uh, we've had a lot of people though, I can tell you sign back up <laughs> who, you know, maybe made some comments. Oh, it's uh, it's just a colors, right? And then next thing you know, they'll sign back up or ask us, can we reactivate their trial because they have, you know, a uh, a, a prospect now that they want to run it on. So, uh, I'd say 60, 60 to five percent ish, you know, are become paying customers, uh, which is you know higher than it was before we were onboarding people the right way. Got it. And then just because I know people still seem confused, this tool is not doing any work for you in like any scanning or automation or anything. This is a sales presentation tool where you go out and you you find and gather the information and you change the colors of a couple boxes between red, yellow, and green. And then it kind of wraps it up into a beautiful report for you. Exactly. Um, that's and correct. and that's that's the goal of this is for you to use this tool for for sales presentations so that way you can give somebody that makes more sense to them as a non-technical person per person person <laughs> and then uh, and then also for you to use this for quarterly business reviews so that way you can say to your client look hey remember this report we did three months ago back when you first came on board well here's where we are now. And, you know, we, we made all those changes. We told you it was going to cost X dollars to make some changes. And, and now I can actually show you the, the differences from three months ago to now. And then, you know, after they've been your customer for a year or two, you can then even, even look and say, hey, remember a couple of years ago when we did this initial baseline report? Look and see all the, all the changes that we've made since then. So I think, I think the point of this tool, I, I like this tool a lot, for one. Uh, but the point of this tool is is not to the the point of this tool is is not to go out and do all the work for you. The point of this tool is to make it easier for 
a prospect or an, or an existing client to say yes. Nothing yep. more. Exactly. Perfectly encapsulated. This is a this is a tool that makes it easier for you to sell and to and to have a prospect or a client say yes to whatever it is that you are selling. Um, it's this, not a data collection tool, and you don't need another data right. collection tool. There's good ones out there already, so you know uh, I don't think exactly. we need more of those. But, but there's not any, in my opinion, solid sales presentation systems like to the point where this helps you create a standardized sales tool. So for for someone like uh, the gentleman in the chat, uh, sure, you, you might already have a process in place. This is the template you use for sales. And you feel as though um, you, you've got a, a great close ratio on your sales. So why should you change your process? And, and if that's your thought, I don't think I don't think you are the target market for Frank and his tool. And I think that's really what it comes down to. And, um, you know, other guys that are smaller or just haven't developed processes yet for selling or for doing quarterly business reviews or, you know, other type of stuff, um, you know, this, this is, this is a great product for you and, and you guys are the target market. Correct. So what I can say, Steve, is I appreciate you, uh, you organizing this. I think that, you know, it's always helpful to, to, uh, have somebody, uh, be willing to expose our product to, you know, to other people in a, in an educational fashion. We hope that, uh, you know, you'll try it and you'll like it. Um, we thank everybody for, for being on the webinar today. And, uh, if you can hop over to our website and like we said, if, uh, if you come in today on a free trial, we'll be sure to waive that onboarding fee, uh, when we, uh, when we, you know, schedule that up. So thanks again. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Frank and Scott for taking time out of your busy days to, to do this presentation. I really appreciate it. And I, I can't wait to see what you guys have in store for us in the future. Um, everyone else, uh, please don't forget next week, we've got two more webinars coming up. Uh, Tuesday, we have Envirosoft, which is a, uh, I, I can't even think of the right word. It's like desk director. Uh, but better. Um, so we have that on Tuesday. And then we've also got another processes and procedures on onboarding on Thursday. So I definitely recommend you guys register for both of those. You'll be able to do so by going to the website as soon as the, uh, the webinar closes, mspwebinars.com. Thanks so much, everyone. And I hope you have a great week, great weekend. Take care. Thank you.